Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on glass material creation in V-Ray. We'll be using an example in V-Ray for Rhino for this class, but this can be applied to other 3D software and other material creation software as well. I've set up an example scene in Rhino where we've got a small courtyard of a tree inside here and a window and window frame that looks into this courtyard. I also have a plane at the back here which I've projected on a background image which we're going to be using to test out the reflections in this scene. As well as this I've set up a camera view which is this window view and this is a view we're going to be rendering out. For my scene lighting I've simply got a V-Ray Sun set up. If I go to my lighting setup in my asset editor in V-Ray you can see I've got this sunlight. We've got a Rhino Sun here which I've turned off for the time being and I'm using the V-Ray Sun settings. And I also have in my settings and environment, we've got a background environment turned on, which gives a kind of overall light to the scene. Now, currently I haven't got any material on my glass pane here, so we're going to do a quick test render using the interactive renderer in V-Ray to see what this is coming out as. And you can see as I open that up, we've got our sun casting our shadow of our frame on this Greek kind of timber facade here, we've got some grass on the ground and then we've got this kind of white box which is our glass and this is what we're going to be applying and testing different materials to. Now we're going to start with a simple glass material so I'm going to just stop this interactive renderer for the time being and we're going to start by going to materials, we're going to create a new material in this add materials button here, go generic and I'm going to call this 01 glass. Now for the diffuse of the glass material, glass is see-through, completely transparent, so it doesn't have a diffuse colour, so we're going to make that black to start with. We're going to make the reflection fully white, so it's fully reflective, it's a shiny reflective material, and we're going to keep the glossiness on a 1, which means it's very shiny at the moment. On the refraction as well, we want this to be transparent glass, so we're going to turn the refraction colour up to white as well. This will make it fully transparent or fully refractive in that case. And then we're going to apply that to our glass object in here just by right clicking on the material and going apply to selection there. And let's test that out and see how that's going. Now this is a basic glass material. We've got a kind of see-through glass we can see here. You can see on the darker parts of the tree there, there's some slight reflections but they're quite hard to see because we've got the refraction all the way up here. If I were to turn the refraction down to halfway to make it kind of semi-refractive, therefore kind of semi-transparent, and we'll just wait for that sort of update in the preview, you see because my material's got a black colour, we're now going to have a kind of semi-transparent black material and it will be much more reflective. We'll be able to see kind of what's behind because it's less transparent. And you can see there, it's a much darker glass in this way, but we can see the reflection behind. Now for a standard glass I'd recommend keeping the refraction up in white, keep it kind of invisible and you get these nice reflections only when there are darker parts of the image. If say you wanted it to be more reflective and you wanted more shiny glass but didn't want to lose any of that transparency, you can play around with the reflection IOR. If I turn this on just by using this tick box and we scroll this number up it makes it kind of a shinier surface, a less sort of and less of kind of see-through and using that colour, but more reflective in that way. If I had it on a kind of 10, it would look more like a mirror material. We'd get an almost perfect reflection. You can see it's still slightly transparent, but it's a much more reflective surface, and you can see the image that I'm I've got behind my scene there that's now being reflected in that window. So I'd recommend keeping it at around a 1.6 which is set at. But you can play around with that value if you want to get more reflective surfaces. Now that's a standard glass material. Now let's have a go at making a coloured glass on there. So I'm going to keep the same settings for my glass but we'll, this time we're going to change the refraction colour here and this is going to change the colour of the see-throughness of our glass. So you, won't, you don't change the diffuse colour ever in a glass material to change its colour because the glass is fully transparent 
we need to change the refraction color in order to get that color to show through. So I've just clicked on refraction color here and we'll scroll down to a blue and I'm just going to make it a blue for now. Yeah, and you can see that's updated in our preview and we'll just wait for that to update in our scene as well. So that's a blue glass and you can kind of scroll through the colors. We've got a quite a dark color on this. You want to kind of pay attention to how bright and dark the colors are because this can affect the overall image as well. But we can change the hue of this to pink to an orange as well. And you can see the reflection around the frame as well is changing because of that. But it's very simple, just changing the refraction colour can give us a different coloured glass there. Now I'm going to make this back to a kind of standard white glass for the time being. And we'll go back and now we're going to look at how to create different types of opacity within the glass and maybe you want a sort of frosted glass effect. So we're going to look at how to do that. Now when you want to sort of dampen the reflections you can change the reflection glossiness to make the reflections less sharp and the same is true for the refractions so at the moment our refraction or our kind of see-throughness of our glass is perfectly sharp and we can see the tree object behind it exactly as it is I can change that refraction glossiness to a lower number if I change it to 0.9 that reflect refraction gets less sharp and more hazy simulating a kind of frosted glass there and you see the lower we put that value the more frosted this effect can be. So I could put it down to a 0.5 and it would be really blurred we could really hardly make out the tree at all now. And you can use that to simulate frosted glass in a way and give that kind of hazy effect but keep the transparency you're just changing the way the objects are visible through that piece of glass. Now we can actually control this more tunely as well by adding maps into this refraction glossiness in, that, in which case if we wanted to say it to be really sharp at the top and get gradually more, um, more frosted as we go down the pane we can do that in the map setting. So if I click on the map channel here you can either use um, the inbuilt maps in V-Ray or you can add your own ones in. I'm going to just drop a gradient in time being and we're just going to do a sort of standard black to white gradient there and we'll just add that into our glossiness and we'll see how that's now going to affect as it updates. Now I've already got a kind of mapping on this which is a lot smaller so you can see that glossiness is working on a sort of smaller panel there and we've got parts here which are fully transparent and then it goes glossier and more more opaque and fades in and out so we can get quite I and mean, you can make custom maps like this in Photoshop you could draw them out just using a black and white map for example if I go back here and let's put in a bitmap this time and we're going to find an image to drop in into our glass texture now I've got a sort of perforated sheet material that you can see here which I'll see just before I drop in I'll show you what that looks like this one here which is just kind of a, a black and white grey and what this would do is where it's black it will be fully frosted and where it's white will be able to see through as if it was kind of perfect glass there so we can use any sort of map setting like this to affect the way our glass is viewed and let's just wait for that up to update and we can kind of see it on the geometry and there you go it's quite small on this but if I make it larger I'm just going to change the mapping by selecting my object and I've already mapped it so I can just up this figure here let's just make it 2000 by 2000 so we can see it more clearly And there you go, you can see that where we've kind of got that cut out, we can see perfectly through the glass, and where we don't, it's sort of frosting now. So you have a lot of control in how you change that. Now the last setting we're going to play around with, with the glass is the 
displacement setting. If you wanted to give glass extra an extra piece of geometry, if you want to distort it, in this case I'm going to look at having fluted glass, where you've kind of got glass tubes making up the pane, and instead of modeling that, we can actually use displacement maps to get this effect. So I'm just going to remove that mask for now, and we're going to put the glossiness back up to one. So we've got our kind of perfect piece of glass again. And I'm going to go down to my maps, go to displacement, and in displacement we're going to add in a displacement map to give a kind of corrugated or fluted glass effect. So just click on the map, select bitmap because we want to use an image to make this effect. And I'm just going to select this image here which is a kind of corrugated displacement map there. Now I'm working in millimetres, so I'm going to put my amount up to 10, which will represent a 10 millimetre displacement there on the geometry, so we'll see it more. You'll see the preview sometimes shows it a bit larger than it actually will be in your model, and that depends on the units you're using. So let's render that out and have a look. And you can see there, we're starting to get the effect. My mapping's slightly too big now because I made it larger for that last piece. So I'm going to put it back down to 300. Just because my texture is a bit larger, so we want to make the mapping smaller to make that spacing out of this particular texture smaller in this case. And let's see it. Yeah, there we go. So you can see now we've given the glass that texture, that fluted texture. And you can, as with the other options, you can add any maps into this to kind of give a surface treatment to the glass, which will then distort the image behind it. You can also rotate the mapping to make that run vertically if you wanted to as well. I'm just rotating it in the y-axis there to flip it. So we've got that vertically running too. So that was just a quick overview of some different glass materials and different ways of creating glass. Um, thank you for watching.